హే గైస్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఈ రోజు వీడియోలో మీకు నేను ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేసే టాపిక్ ఏంటంటే మైక్రోసాఫ్ట్ నవంబర్ సెకండ్ వీక్ లో టూ వనరబిలిటీస్ ని ఐడెంటిఫై చేసింది ఆ టూ వనరబిలిటీస్ ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ అది ఎట్లా అటాక్ వస్తుంది అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ సివిఎస్ఎస్ స్కోర్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వాట్ ఇస్ ఫిక్స్ రిలీజ్ ఫర్ దోస్ పర్టికులర్ వనరబిలిటీస్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ దోస్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఐ విల్ ప్రొవైడ్ so this is happened november second week as i mentioned first cve id common vulnerability exposure id number it's a cve 2022 41040 so what is the vulnerability description and what is the weakness it is related to privilege escalation okay so attacker can identify or get the weakness to the lower level system from there he will get the higher level access so that is the first one and the cvs score is 7.9 as per microsoft but as per nvd okay national vulnerability database they provided the cvs score is 8.8 so nothing but it's a high severity basically and second vulnerability one more vulnerability so cv 2022 41082 so what is this attack is about or what is the weakness about this particular vulnerability it's a remote code execution for microsoft exchange server these two vulnerabilities will applicable to microsoft exchange server 2012 or 16 okay so and also cvss score is 7.9 as per microsoft as per national vulnerability database cvss score is 8.8 so first we can go and we can discuss about what is the attack or what is the vulnerability so then we can discuss about what is the fix release okay so as per the microsoft r and d team r and d is nothing but okay so research and development team so they identified as a attack vector it's a network related part through networking protocols attacker is entered into the organization level attack complexity is a low nothing but attacker easily he can hack the particular exchange server so what is the privilege required it's a low level so low level of the access is fine or access control is fine or user control is fine user interaction none there is no need to contact the user and the scope unchanged it will not change anything of the scope confidentiality integrity and availability is very 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 high so that is the reason overall cvss score is 7.9 or 8.8 and also impact business impact and also risk assessment wise it's a very high severity so out of these three confidentiality integrity and availability at least out of these three if it is one then we can reduce the so i mean cvss score but unfortunately confidentiality integrity and availability also very high so that is the reason it is one of the high severity based on the microsoft and based on the national vulnerability database so these two vulnerabilities will come as a hand in hand so how that particular attack will be exploited by the attacker so what is the weakness is about i will explore those things you can see down how the attacker can exploit this vulnerability so as i said this one is server side request forgery attack so first vulnerability whatever we i am saying it's a privilege escalation this is applicable to server side request forgery and second thing is applicable to remote code execution so these two vulnerabilities if the hacker or intruder will exploit it then finally this attack will be completely compromised by the ias server okay so now coming back so attacker will send a malicious http request on port number 443 so example whatever website you are accessed so that particular website so one of the dynamic nature of the malicious code he will send it so once the malicious code is sending through port number 443 as a http request then what will happen so first vulnerability or weakness it will be identified what is that first weakness or vulnerability it is a server side request forgery so attacker will get the forgery of the server side on behalf of the server he will respond back so it's a one type of remote code i mean not remote code privilege escalation next one is remote code execution so once that server side request forgery attack will happen then he will identify the weakness and he will inject some of the code related to powershell then finally that powershell and malware is injected into the attacker machine so you can see drop web cells drop web cells meaning here 
Python or PowerShell related, basically PowerShell. PowerShell related web cell, it will be encrypted on the website wherever the end user is accessing and also server. And it will run those arbitrary comments of the PowerShell, whatever the malicious code he sent through web browser. Then finally, he will get the compromise of the respective server. So this server side request perjury. Once he will compromise the server, so then what will happen? So here, it will take care of lateral movement from one server to another server through lateral movement, it will get compromised. If one system will get compromised, one server will get compromised, it will affect multiple systems as well. Data exfiltration, so he will take the data also. Then Active Directory account, so he will, is trying to compromise the Active Directory, selection of the target of that particular Active Directory, right? So that is the way how the attacker is trying to do the attack using both. So privilege escalation and also remote code execution. So by entering the malicious code in the web browser. So that is about overall how the attacker is trying to do the hacking part. Okay, what are the scripts he will use or web shells he will use? PowerShell. Now, what is the fix for this particular attack? So Microsoft is provided three solutions. But one and two are like a temporary. Three is a main completely how we can fix that particular issue. So three, I think this is wrong. So three, we have to do something configuration in the IAS server. In IAS server, we have to configure some of the actions we have to define. So first one is Microsoft has recommended enabling the URL rewrite module and Excel server. So what about 2012 and 2016 Exchange Server of IAS? So we have to rewrite of the code or module. So we have to log into the IAS server. From there, we have to enabling the URL. Next one, what Microsoft is recommended second option as a, so we have to uh, uh, block the two ports. One port is 5985 and second one is 5986. These two ports we have to block. Okay, so that is, uh, once we are blocking this one, attacker is very difficult to run the PowerShell commands. Okay, so then, so uh, server or system will not get compromised. And also third option, what they provided. So in the IS server, we have to configure something. Okay, what are those configurations? So I will open this one and I will explain. So this link I will post even in the description of the uh, description, whatever uh, YouTube, I mean video I'm uploading in the YouTube. So please go through the description of this particular. So you are a link and uh, you can see the full description as well as analysis, mitigations and so on. So I'm clicking on this one. So here couple of uh, file names also they provide .dll file. Okay. And also uh, dot, uh, .exe files. Okay, so all these are malicious files. Through these malicious files, attacker will enter into the organization level. So these hash value also, it's better to close now itself. So these are like a indicator of compromise information. These IOCs, if are blocking in the, our files uh, of the malware, as well as even in the firewall proxy and also ADR tools, then we can prevent this attack. Additionally, from these IPs, whenever we are getting the request, so it's better to block these IPs in the firewall level itself so that uh, we can take, take care of the project to threat hunting. Okay, so this is about overall. So how we can fix these particular vulnerabilities. One is privilege escalation. Second one is remote code execution of the vulnerability. So maybe I can, I'm expecting, so this one, maybe they will ask in the interview point of view, whenever you are attending the interviews, because this is one of the recent most very popular attack, it is there in the news. So thank you so very much for watching for this particular video. As I said earlier, so this particular link, a full description of the vulnerability analysis, impact, mitigation steps, and also what IPs we have to block, what hash values we have to block, I'll provide in the description of the YouTube video. Thank you so very much for watching for this particular video. So have a nice evening.